let's take a look at the third exercise. Alright, welcome back to the Java introduction here from Minecraft and Hytale Modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the third and last exercise of this Java series. It has been quite the crazy ride at this point, you know, to get here is pretty crazy. And the third exercise is a little bit different than the last two. So we're actually not going to have any hints here. We're only going to have, well, a solution basically ready at hand. Once again, of course, the exercise is available in the description below in a gist basically to just have the, you know, this comment here that you can take for yourself. And I'm just going to explain what I mean with this. So there's two parts of this exercise. The first is once again, the trivia game, but this time with classes and objects. So you should modify the trivia game that we've made in the previous two exercises in such a way that they use classes as well. So you can just think of this, right? How you can use a class to maybe make a question and answer pair sort of, you know, and then you can maybe have a class that has sort of a list of those. Just think about this uh, in a way. And once again, here also, if your solution works, but it very much differs from my solution, that is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with this because there is a, about a billion ways to actually do this. Some of them are maybe more optimized. Some of them are not so optimized. Some of them are more complicated. Some of them are not so complicated. So once again, don't worry too much about it, but I will show you one well, working example in these solutions. And then the, the second thing is that I have basically, hey, make a bank management system. What does that mean? Well, the following components should be there. You should have a person, a bank, and a checking account. So those are sort of the three you know, what could that be? Three components, three classes of things you might want to have. And they, of course, need to have some particular attributes, right? So, for example, something like a first, middle and last name, an age, maybe a social security number. A bank might have a list of customers and their checking accounts that you can somehow access, you know, with this customer. And also it should have a maximum overdraw amount and maybe even a, a, a minimum deposit basically so what is the minimum initial deposit something like that and then a checking account you know should have of course the current value the balance of the actual account and then think about some methods for taking out and depositing money and how you could sort of all bunch that together and then of course also you should take a look at the opening of a checking account should only work via a bank right you can't just make a like a a new account anywhere basically that could be something where you could think about how to maybe do that uh, same with basically the uh, cash when you actually deposit or take cash from it, withdraw something that should all go via the bank and not via just the account. And yeah, that's pretty much the general idea. Once again, also no worries at all if it looks a little bit different than from what the solution has, that's totally fine. And then as like a really crazy bonus, if you really want to test your limits, yeah, then you can make the entire banking system interactive. So that you can basically basically have a, well, almost a loop where you're like, hey, what do you want to do? I want to create a new bank, right? And then you write in like bank and then it's like, what is the name of the bank? And then you basically create everything inside of this interactive stuff or you maybe even have a bank. You can log in in, in like quotation marks in a bank and then, you know, withdraw this much. And then it's going to say, hey, you don't have enough money, so you can't withdraw that and stuff like that. So that would be a bonus, which I do not have a solution for, because that's definitely a little more complicated in this case. And I just wanted to, you know, give, get the general gist here. And overall, this does not really need to use interfaces, inheritance, and I don't even think polymorphism. So basically, the last two tutorials really are not that necessary for everything here um, in this case, in this specific case, but overall classes and objects. Well, let's see what you can do. So once again, pause the video now and then I will go on to the solution for number A. All right, so let's take a look at the first solution here for number A. And basically we have a trivia game class and a trivia class and we are just making a new trivia game class, as you can see, and then calling the start game method right here. And let's just actually run this and see how it works or how it looks like. What is the most prevalent power outage, cause of power outages? Well, that actually is a squirrels. I know that. Now, I just don't know how to write squirrels, but it was the correct answer. Let's go. So FE. Oh, and I've actually written that incorrectly. So what a shame. Well, that was the incorrect answer. Bummer right there, but that's okay. The actual correct answer was 50, apparently. So that's definitely a, <laughs> well, there is a typo somewhere, but that's totally fine. 8848. Eight, eight, and that was correct. And then the smallest country is Vatican City. 
And, well, you get the idea, that's totally fine. So let's actually just close this out. That's totally fine. And let's actually take a look at this. So a trivia class, uh, of course, saves the answers and questions in strings here. So we can create new trivia like this. And then we have a Boolean, which is going to be the is correct answer. So we get can put in an input here and basically return whether or not the answer that was input here is true or false. We also have the print question where we just print the question. We have also print answer, which actually isn't used in this case, but that's totally fine. We have the validate answer, which also takes in an input, then calls the is correct answer and then basically does stuff, right? So it prints the correct, hey, this was correct, this was incorrect, and then prints the correct answer as well, and then returns the valid. So this is basically the validation, which also prints out stuff. And this is just the, well, is this correct or not? So that's all that there is to the trivia class. And then in the trivia game, we basically have all of the interesting stuff. So first of all, we have a scanner here, which of course reads stuff in, we have a score, and we have even a max score currently not used, but you could of course implement that as well. We have a list of trivia. So this is the list of questions and answers. Those are populated at the very start here. So start game, populate trivia list. So I can middle mouse button click and then you can see what is the chemical of um, iron. It actually, of course, is Fe50. That was a typo. There are no worries at all. And here we have this, well, we make this a new array list and then we just add a bunch of trivia to it. We also say, hey, max score is equal to the size of this list. And then we just shuffle it as well, just so that we don't have the same, well, order every time. And the really cool thing is that here, now because this all separated out so neatly, at some point, if we, for example, wish to save all of the trivia, the questions and answers in like in a file somewhere, we could just do that. So there's no worries at all. So we could just put that in a file and then read it in, in this method here, and then do that as well. So that's really cool. And overall, you can see that the game loop. So we have a game loop here, right, which once again, while true. So this is very, very similar to what we've done before, right, where we just go through each trivia that we have, we print the question, we say, hey, is the answer correct, get the user input, we can say score if this is true. Otherwise, you know, and we'll print the score every time. And then at the end of this, when we're done through with the list, basically, we call the should end game, we ask for a board, and then we return end game with the user input. So that is pretty crazy and pretty cool. At the end, we then also print the score and then we are done with this. This is a really cool thing uh, to take a look at. And um, yeah, like this is pretty much all that we really need here. It's actually a little less complicated than just using the methods, to be honest, because you know, saving everything in the trivia class here is definitely going to make this a little bit easier. So definitely take a look at the code here, you know, um, basically compare with your code, see what differs. If your code works, once again, your code isn't wrong. It simply is different, right? Because once again, there are a million different ways to do this. So don't feel bad or something like that. If you have this differently, that's totally, totally fine. But that would be the solution for A. And well, let's uh, pause and then you can take a look at solution for B. All right, so solution for B, let's take a look. So first of all, we have some persons here, as you can see, and we make one bank. So the accountant bank, we're going to create that. And then people want to open bank accounts there. And I have actually added some comments here, what should happen. So the first thing that should be output is this person is not old enough because there are only eight. And then Marie here that nothing should happen. And then here the initial deposit should be not enough. We can get the balance by doing get account by person, passing in the person and then getting the balance here. And then we are trying to withdraw 3000. However, that is too much because the limit is actually, I think 500 I've set it to, so that doesn't work. So let's see if that is the output. And you can see Nanotech is not old enough to open a bank account. We have the deposit of 10 is not enough. You would need at least 150. Then we get the balance from Marie here to 2000, and then cannot withdraw over the limit. So that's pretty cool. Everything that we've expected happened, happened. So let's take a look at, first of all, the person class. This is actually one of the easiest ones that we have here. We basically have a, well, you can see that we have a normal person constructor and then we have a second constructor that actually calls this constructor here that's very interesting because if we don't pass in a middle name we can still call this and just put the middle name to basically an empty string right here so that's actually really cool we have a boolean method that is is older than where we just pass in an integer and then do this and all of the fields are actually private so we have getters and no no setters in this case because once a person in our you know little banking system here is done then we don't change them anymore of course that's 
Uh, we could add a birthday method as well, something like that, but that's totally fine. And an account has a balance, an account ID, and an account holder. So you can see that this is basically set. We have a deposit amount and a withdrawal amount to basically call, which changes the balance. Now those are protected, meaning they can only be called in the same package right here. So this can only be called really by the bank. And in the bank, you can see I have some final uh, static stuff. So min and uh, max withdrawal, minimum initial deposit. Uh, there's a list of accounts and then, then the bank has also a name and there's some stuff right here. So can bulk open bank account is really the crazy thing where we have something like, well, is the person not older than 16? Then it's like, no, it doesn't work. If they are, then okay. And then if the initial deposit is actually less than, then it also doesn't work. Now, the funny thing is that I've actually literally like just now seen a little bit of an error in here in this in this method. Now, I'm actually not going to tell you what it is because I actually think that this is a great, this is actually a great opportunity here for you to think about this. So there is actually a bug in here in which I can actually open a bank account even though I might not be 16. So think about this and if you can figure it out, then I'm actually like, I would be impressed. So take a look at this. Uh, otherwise, this would pr pretty much be a, you know, possible solution for this problem here. And of course, once again, if yours differs, that's totally fine. That's totally normal. It's just the way that I've basically drawn this up. Right. And this would already be for this exercise right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.